the Avatar fandom is buzzing with the news of yet another live-action remake. Although this remake promises to redeem live-actions by highlighting the indigenous and Asian cultures that inspired the original bending techniques, it supposedly has a $15 million budget for each episode. Let's do a deep dive into the details to see if the rumors of it being a $100 million show have any weight to them. So why fix it? When the news of another ATLA live-action initially started doing the rounds, enthusiasts around the globe were all but out with their pitchforks. While some of the fans were incensed because of the Shyamalan episode, and rightly so, others had a bone to pick with the live-action genre itself. To elaborate, fans think that animated shows are legitimate and enjoyable as it is, and therefore don't need to be remade into live-action movies, especially shows like Avatar which leave no loose ends untied. Dan Lin, the renowned producer of a plethora of Lego movies and one of the directors of the live-action, however, elaborated on the need for another remake despite the original's thoroughgoing storyline. That is, he believes that while the story was a complete experience, there were a number of arcs that weren't fleshed out properly because of the show's self-contained narrative and half an hour episode. On top of that, he expressed how the show has a lot of room for newer dimensions, which can, moreover, be made more visceral and real with the use of VFX technology. Thus, the showmakers don't intend on fixing the show at all, rather, their goal is, as Lin puts it, to help it breathe and grow. Nevertheless, newer elements can only mean more CG, and more CG definitely means more money. Let's find out how much and why exactly. Next, a $100 million show. The news of the adaptation's hefty budget was first broken by CBR, the best comic book related website that the internet has to offer. Nonetheless, although CBR places the show's budget at $120 million for a total of eight episodes in the first season, inner sources say that it could easily exceed that amount with how big it is. As per the report, the cost will mainly be used to foot the bill of a new custom-built virtual technology that has previously been used to create shows like Disney's The Mandalorian. This new technology, reportedly known as The Volume, is in its essence a green screen that can reflect scenes and effects quite easily. These scenes and effects can then later be modified as needed. In spite of the fact that it was Disney that jump-started the use of the North American technology wonder, the ATLA remake might popularize its use to no end. Considering the vastness of the Avatar world with its awe-striking architecture and one too many cute and sometimes terrifying creatures, the screen might have to go into overtime. Reports also say that each episode will be an hour long and all manner of things can go down in that time, especially if you consider episodes like The Southern Air Temple, which not only features Aang finding another furry companion, Momo the lemur, but more importantly, a full-blown Agni Kai between Zhao and Prince Zuko. Still, and in view of the series being only eight episodes are compared to the original book, one with its 20 episodes, the budget isn't all that crazy, but still on the cheaper side. If you think about it, $120 million seems a little cheap when you take into account that the cost of M. Night Shyamalan's disastrous adaptation ran up to $150 million, and it, thankfully, only had to recreate Zhao's attack on the Northern Water Tribe and a handful of other important scenes. Even though nobody can say for sure at the minute, the Netflix live-action will follow the original storyline. Given that they do, the first book alone has a bunch of locations that will need a lot of CGI. For instance, if they're going to recreate Aang and Boomy's reunion, they'll not only have to recreate Omashu, but find a way to portray Boomy's pet, Flopsy, as well. And those of you who remember, Flopsy wasn't a cuddly little rabbit. He was a ginormous gorilla with tusks. Since we're on the subject of Boomy, the test that he sets for Aang will also be a challenge to showcase, if they decide to factor them into their scripts at all. Now, even though real-life locations sometimes reduce the need for CGI, notably Mount Doom from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings adaptation, which was filmed using an actual volcano, Avatar mostly features architecture and locations that might be hard to find on the map. Anywho, even if they find locations that are somewhat similar to, let's say, the Northern Air Temple, traveling to each one of these locations is straight up a formula for bankruptcy. Also, coronavirus restrictions might get in the way of that. All in all, we can't say much till Netflix releases a trailer. Now, other related news. Although most fans aren't too eager for the show's release, some of them can't wait for it to come out to see if it's gone down the same path as the abominable movie. While some rumors state that the show is likely to be released in April, there's no sign of it on Netflix's list of scheduled releases. In fact, certain reports claim that the show doesn't wrap up filming till the end of May. With at least six months of post-production in mind, the show might come out in 2022. Nevertheless, 2023 seems like the more likely year for the return of the Avatar. Next, content from the original creators. Michael DiMartino and Brian Konietzko, the original creators of the series, were initially working with the producers on the Netflix live action. However, they soon walked away from the project citing that they couldn't give it any new directions. Even so, they're both still working on ATLA content of their own with Nickelodeon. This content, which includes an animated theatrical film that was already in the making when the studio was first announced in 2021, will be released in collaboration with Avatar Studios. The studio is a division geared at expanding everything Avatar related using original content. Although the film's nowhere to be seen for now, the Avatar Braving the Elements podcast has been renewed for a second season. For fans who are out of the loop, this Nickelodeon podcast gives fans insights into the lore as well as a glance at the behind the scenes of not just ATLA, but Legend of Korra as well. The show's hosted by none other than Janet Varney, the voice of Aang's successor, Avatar Korra. She's also joined by Dante Bosco, the voice of everybody's teen heartthrob, Prince Zuko. While on the subject of new content, and for fans who are big on board, 
board games, a board game titled Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising has also been recently announced. Let's see what it's like. And then we have the Avatar board game. The game which is being manufactured by leading board games and puzzles developing company The Op. The game which is being manufactured by the leading board games and puzzles developing company The Op is a card game. From what we know so far, it'll involve invoking different heroes from the series in an attempt to defeat Fire Lord Ozai and a set of other villains like Azula and Fang. Its events will eventually lead up to the day of the Black Sun. However, the coolest feature of the whole enterprise is the Ozai figurine which will perhaps be placed at the center of the board and attack the characters from that standpoint. Although the game doesn't have a release date as of yet, it has created a lot of hype among fans alongside the new Avatar RPG and MMORPG video games that are currently being developed cooperatively by Paramount, Avatar Studios, and another unnamed game developer. Our byword has been authenticity. The 2021 Cruella film which tried giving Cruella a clean shit heightened the much needed debate surrounding making films more politically correct. The live action showrunner Albert Kim, who was introduced to the show by his daughter, has however expressed in interviews that he'll maintain the original TV show's authenticity. In simpler terms, he won't be modernizing any of the angles to pander to today's audiences. Instead, and as we hinted at before, he's taken it upon himself to preserve the show's lore and furthermore, to highlight the cultures that inspired the original tale. To indirectly quote him, he wants to show the aforementioned cultures and their peoples as real life and breathing people, and not something that just exists in cartoons. He also joked about Katara not sporting curtain bangs, and mentioned how he would like Sokka to have a TikTok account. Jokes aside, his interviews further reveal that he's assembled a talented team so that he can keep his word to the fans regarding the show's authenticity. To quote, a group of talented and passionate artists who are working around the clock to bring this rich and incredible beautiful world to life. While speaking of the characters, he said that they're all what the fans are already familiar with. Thus, Aang's been portrayed as a reluctant hero, Katara as a character who's been through a great personal tragedy, and Zuka as an exile, and so on and so forth. All things considered, these comments have made certain fans quite hopeful. Nevertheless, we'd advise you not to get your hopes up before the show's actually out. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of live action adaptations? Should they use the budget to create a similar TV show instead? Or do you think that the days of action thrillers are over? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!